Russell Dobular hit the streets of Los Angeles a couple days ago and went to do a little on the ground investigative reporting at the In and Out Burger. Why? Well, minimum wage for fast food workers Arnage. was just raised in California. So this is Fox Business reports Burger King, In and Out, and other chain locations in California raise prices after minimum wage increase. Oh my God. Report. Absolute barbarity. Absolute barbarity. Fox Business reports prices for burgers, fries, and other fast food items have increased at various restaurant chains across California, according to a recent report. A New York Post investigation revealed that some fast food chains in the Los Angeles area raised prices on April 1st after new California statewide legislation went into effect Monday, enforcing a $20 minimum wage for restaurants that have at least 60 locations nationwide, except those that make and sell their own bread. So I guess the Panera, Gavin Newsom, boyfriend, loophole made it in there after all. Okay, but then I read another article that said that the legislation does apply to Panera. So I'm not quite clear who the carve out is for. Is it for donut shops? Like yeah. who are they protecting here? If, if the Panera thing's not true. Yeah, I'm not sure. Cause first I heard Panera, then I heard they were getting rid of that. Now it seems there are some exemptions. Uh, but anyway, we know in and out is not exempt. Governor Gavin Newsom signed no. the legislation. AB 1228. No, no, to be clear, I don't, I don't think this is in here, but this only applies to chains that have minimum 40 stores in the state. Right. So it's big, big fast food chains. Yeah. yeah you, you, you'll see a lot of bullshit. Oh, those the mom and pop shops. Are, no, no. <laughs> it's like this is there's only fast food franchises with minimum 40 restaurants. Right. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom signed the legislation AB 1228 into law in September. In addition to the pay raises, it also establishes a fast food council, including representatives for both workers and employers that can approve further pay increases and set standards for working conditions. Quote, the biggest leap was at Burger King, where a Texas double Whopper meal cost fifteen oh nine on March 29th, but surged to sixteen eighty nine on April 1st, a whopping increase of $1.80, nearly 12% for the same meal the Post reported. Some context, which we're going to get into a bit later in the segment, is that fast food prices had been just out of control yes. before this. The big right. fish meal also in states jumped. states that did not increase the minimum wage. Right. The big fish meal also jumped from seven forty nine on the menu before April first to eleven forty nine after an increase of four dollars. The report continued. I'm surprised they still sell that shit. Who buys a fish sandwich from Burger King? Most other items increased anywhere from twenty five cents to one dollar. Well, and who's going to buy it at that price? At that price, yeah, especially. Hart House and In and Out Burger also saw price increases at certain locations. So. This is the tweet that went viral, 18.2 million views as of yesterday. California hiked the minimum wage to $20 per hour for fast food workers this week. You'll never guess what happened next. They raised prices by anywhere from, what, 25, 35, 10, 15 cents uh, The per most menu was item. 25 cents, I think, on the double-double. And then here and there, they raised 15 cents, I think, on the cheeseburger. A nickel fries, they didn't raise at all. I think I think the shake they raised uh, about uh, 15 cents. That's and right. uh, yeah, man, it was it was carnage, man. It was carnage at the in and out. Well, I went over there. I could I couldn't believe it. I'm a libertarian now. After, <laughs> Let's see after what I witnessed at the in and out burger. Let's see Russell Dobular on the ground at in and out. We live stream this to Twitter, but we're going to play it for you guys right now. Let's see what the situation is now that prices have gone up a whopping 25 cents per double double. Wow, it is uh, it is carnage here at the In and Out Burger. They raised those prices, and this is a ghost town. It's a ghost town here at the In and Out Burger. Look at this, look at this, sir. That that twenty five cent increase on the double double didn't deter you from coming here. It's, it's our first time. No, it's our first time. So. Uh, it's your first time. You weren't shocked by the prices. No. no? Well, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. So you, it didn't deter you from coming here. No. All right. All right. Good. Good. You know, I thought it was going to be a ghost town. I thought it was going to be a ghost town. There's a big line of cars there. 
Huh. Let's see. I bet, I bet inside we'll see. It's going to be a ghost town. Oh my God, sir. The people haven't stopped coming here because of the price increases? <laughs> 25 cents on the double double. That's what people wanted me to wait to go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like it deterred anybody. Wow. Unbelievable, man. These people are willing to pay these outrageous prices in order to make sure that people have a living wage. I get, I, it, wow. Wow. Holy crap. It's almost like everything you're hearing in the media about this is total fucking bullshit. Who would have thought the media would lie about the consequences of raising wages for working people? I would never expect that. Well, I'm gonna, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. That extra 25 cents do bite. But I'm gonna cough that up for my uh, double double. It is the first time I, I've gotten off the property, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna indulge myself a little bit. So it is carnage here. Nobody can really afford it, but you know I'm gonna kick up kick up that 25 cents. I found it in a sewer outside, so uh, fortunately I can afford it. Oh look, even this guy. See? There you go. Reporting from In-N-Out Burger. Okay, so I really built the case. If anyone, I see some people in the comments maybe didn't see those segments. Uh, we did two segments on this on the Jimmy Dore show explaining this. And, you know, uh, you get so often our criticism is of, you know, just the batshit drooling liberal elite stuff. But, you know, it sounds exactly the same from the other uh, sector of the media. You don't understand the damn economics. You don't understand the poor people. They have to fish toilet paper out of the back of the supermarket. That's how they're <laughs> supposed to live. All right. So listen, man, this is what I call a fucking peasant mentality. They got you going around talking like if poor people and workers get a raise you are personally morally offended by it now if you're not a working person if you're a rich person fair enough fair enough i just advise you to build a moat and hope that the poors can't get past it when they finally come for you if you're a working person talking that shit, you are the old eddie murphy joke about how his grandmother used to make him go get the stick in the backyard to beat his own ass with you are a working person going to get the stick to beat your own ass. What do you think they're going to do with your jobs when the AI is really up and running? You think because you didn't ask for a raise, you're going to get to keep your job? They are going to fire you no matter what. Everyone's complaining about all the price increases in the supermarket, and we've seen from studies they didn't even have to increase prices like that. These supermarket chains are making record profits. Nobody asked for more wages. They will fuck you every way that you can. And if you continue in this vein where you're picking up these talking points that they have spent decades brainwashing working people with in order to make them very irrationally connect the condescending stuff from liberal class people, their cultural positions. I talk a lot about that. The next segment is kind of about that. I don't like that shit either. But they connected it with an economic philosophy that only benefits corporations and rich people. They actually brainwash people into saying, God damn it, I don't like gender neutral bathrooms. And on top of that, don't pay workers more. What the fuck do those things have to do with each other? What do they have to do with each other? Who do you think benefits from you believing that? Who do you think benefits from you believing that? I've had people so fucking moronic that they talked about how they ship the factories offshore. How are you going to offshore a Pizza Hut? Can you tell me that? Can you tell me how you're going to offshore a Taco Bell? If you look at the profits of these companies, it is not that they cannot afford to pay workers more. These companies over decades have gradually funneled all the profits up to the CEOs and it put it into buybacks for the shareholders. That's where this money went. It's not that the money's not there. 
It's not that they have no choice but to go bankrupt if they have to pay workers. You know what? They make so much profit, they don't even have to really increase the prices for the most part. They're choosing to do it that way. They're choosing to pass it on to the consumer. So what you have to do as a worker, instead of listening to this fucking scumbag douchebag over at End Wokeness, who, who knows who the fuck pays that guy, to tell you this shit because yesterday he was able to get you really mad about Dylan Mulvaney. So now he's connecting this to that in your mind, even though the one has nothing to do with the other. If you really take out on these companies the same way that you acted towards Bud Light, the same way that you acted towards Target, you see anybody making ads like that now? You see any more ads like the Bud Light ad? So imagine if you applied it to something that actually affects your life, unlike Dylan Mulvaney, who you're never going to meet, who's going to have very little impact on your actual life. Because if you think by being a good peasant, like the peasants used to be under the aristocracy, oh, the Lord is so good to us, because that, that's what you're being. You're being a fucking peasant. If you think that's going to save your job, you got another thing coming, man. If you have not built some kind of working class solidarity, and you better build it very quickly, the AI is coming for all of you. It's coming for all of you. They're not going to thank you for bowing your head like a peasant and saying, oh, oh, please don't come for my job. They're going to come for your fucking job too. And if you haven't built any working class solidarity, if what you did at this moment was to attack workers for asking for a wage that these companies could very well afford to pay, you deserve what you get later on. So instead of attacking workers, why don't you attack companies like Pizza Hut that laid off 1,100 drivers? Why don't you boycott Pizza Hut, which is what we proposed on the Jimmy Dore show? Boycott, because they will fire you if they can, if they can. It is up to you to make them feel they can't without losing more money than they're gaining by firing people. And if you don't support those workers right now when this is happening, it's going to be your job. It's going to be your job. And you're going to be saying, oh, no, but I didn't ask for more than $12. They're not going to give a shit. If they can save the money they're paying you, they're coming for you too. Of course. Of course. I like this comment. Scumbag douchebag is, I think, Foghorn Leghorn's cousin. <laughs> Sc scumbag douchebag here. Americans face price surge in food from groceries to McDonald's. So this is a piece that exactly. came out. Uh, this is uh, a piece about nationwide food prices, especially grocery and fast food prices. So this has nothing to do with minimum wage increase in one state. Americans are shocked by how expensive their groceries and restaurant bills are. McDonald's prices have doubled, and Olive Garden is now too expensive for many. A new report from the Wall Street Journal shows that $100 at the grocery store just does not go as far as it did five years ago. Today, the same grocery list costs 36.5% more. Everybody knows this, right? Everybody who buys groceries, even if you go eat fast food, it's absolutely right. insane. Food prices, like any sort of basic necessity, are going to disproportionately affect more consumers because they have fewer dollars to spend, Vice President of General Economics at the Cato Institute, Scott Luchicome, explained. There is a silver lining. Bacon and tilapia. Oh, that's a good. The, the most disgusting food you could eat. Uh, tilapia are less expensive <laughs> and assorted bagels are 49 percent less in 2022, per the journal. That is true. Bagels have not gone up. You can still get a bagel with butter for $2 in my neck of the woods. However, items like beef, fruit snacks, and mayonnaise are more than 50% more expensive than back in 2019, and consumers are feeling the pinch when eating out. There's a time when a trip to the Olive Garden was affordable. On their latest earnings call, the restaurant's parent company reported much lower sales among Americans who make below $75,000 a year. When it comes to the grocery store, when it comes to going out to eat, if you see a 20, 30 percent increase in those prices and you're on the lower end of the income scale while you're going to scale back or not go at all, Linsa Kome said, as the Daily Mail points out, McDonald's prices have doubled in 10 years. 
back in 2014, you could get a McDouble for just $1.19, and today you will pay $3.19. A 10-piece McNuggets meal was just $5.99, and today you're going to have to pay $10.99. $10.99 for a 10-piece Nuggets meal. That's what it is. My area of the woods, yes, $6. $6 not too long ago. If the shake machine is working, you'll pay $4.49 for an Oreo McFlurry. A decade ago, it was just two. 39. So, well, look, I'm sure uh, we are not the only two to notice. If you go through a drive through window, it's insane. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Fast food yep. is more expensive than the diner food, more expensive than Chinese yeah. takeout now. It's yeah. incredible. It's and not, they're it's not, not even, hurting financially. It's not worth it. They're raking it in. They're raking sure. it in, even sure. in the 49 other states which have not recently increased their minimum wage. This, this is all I have to say. Look, I, 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 get really, I get really angry about this, partly, probably partly because... I grew up in a working class neighborhood where I saw a lot of people get brainwashed this way. And and it's a combination of things. That's why I always recommend Thomas Frank's What's the Matter with Kansas in combination with Listen Liberal, because that's the full picture. There There's an element of the way Republicans tied culture war issues to an elite economics and convinced people that those things went together and there's the way that the liberal class abandoned the working class via the democratic party and sent out every signal they could that not only didn't they want those people but they had absolute cultural contempt for those people the combination of these things is why you have so many people who you know uh, think they got a fucking economics degree on the back of a fucking envelope at the University of Bob every time you bring this up. I, you don't understand economics. No, motherfucker, you don't understand fucking economics. You don't understand economics. Look at the profits these companies make. Look at the profits these companies make. It is not that they don't, do you understand? It's not that they're on these very tight margins of profit and if you shake anything in the tree, yeah, no, no, they, no. they go bankrupt. That's what they're telling you. That's what they're telling you. And I do not understand why you have so many people who are skeptical of every media narrative, whether it be the jab, which is very safe and effective, as we know, whether whether it be the military industrial complex, whether it be media itself, they're skeptical of every media narrative. This is the one thing where you have a lot of people who are skeptical of all those narratives who think the media told them the truth. So, you know, there's a saying, if you if you want to see who has power, look at who you're not allowed to question. So I would modify that a little bit. If you want to see what they really care about, look what they made sure to brainwash you into. Look what they made sure the one thing you wouldn't question would be. Wages and the right to go after these corporations for more of them. They trained you to hate your own class. They trained you to hate yourself. They trained you to hate your fellow worker. And you gotta, you gotta, you heard of decolonizing your mind? You gotta de peasantize your mind. You gotta get that peasant mentality that you've been trained into out of you because raise wages, not raise wages. Look what happened in the supermarkets, man. The supermarket workers didn't demand higher wages. Did that, did that stop them? Until you get together and overthrow this system. They're going to come for you, and things are going to get harder and harder for you. They are going to extract as much wealth from the working class as they think they can get. And when AI comes, that's going to be all the rest of it. Please clap.